Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another video in my office. We are still in the middle of lockdown here in the UK but my thoughts are turning to what I'm going to do when lockdown is over. What are the first locations that I'm going to visit? And so in this video what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to share my approach to planning my landscape photography shoots. Now it isn't absolutely essential that you plan all of your landscape photography shoots. It can be quite good fun just to go to a new location for the very first time and see what you get and see what you can come up with. And that can be quite creative. But for me, what I like to do is I like to plan these things out so that I maximize the chance that I'm gonna get the sort of shot that I'm after. Now traditionally, I haven't been very good at planning. In my previous career, before I became a full-time landscape photographer, I wasn't very good at planning. And there is some truth in the adage that if you fail to prepare, you must prepare to fail. And certainly I found that with my photography. Often, if I don't plan something, I end up not being able to find the sort of composition that I'm after, or I end up with the wrong sort of conditions. And so in this video, we're gonna look at the process that I go through when I'm planning a landscape photography shoot. The first thing that I like to check when I'm planning a landscape photography shoot is the position in which the sun is rising and setting. And that's because I like to do my landscape photography at the beginning and the end of the day. That's when I feel that the light is at its best. And in actual fact, what that really means for me is the morning. I do 90 to 95% of my photography in the morning around sunrise. And here in the UK, the point at which the sun is rising differs massively throughout the year. So at the summer solstice, the sun is rising at about 45 degrees from north, so that's northeast. And at the winter solstice, the sun is rising at about 132 degrees from north, and that's actually in the southeast. And getting the position of the sun where that's rising in relation to your subject, your view, whatever you're photographing, is really, really important in landscape photography. Now, in order to figure out where the sun will be rising and setting, I use a website called The Photographer's Ephemeris. And what this allows me to do is to see the angle at which the sun will be rising and setting for any point in the world on any day of the year. And at the moment, the sun is rising at about 64 degrees from the north. So we're about 20 degrees south of where it will be rising during the summer equinox. Once I understand where the sun will be rising from, I can start to look for a suitable location that will kind of match that angle of the sun. Now, in order to do that, I use the OS map, and I have, there's the OS map online, and I also have the OS map on my phone, and I spend a huge amount of time studying the OS maps, looking for potential views, and for a potential location for which to take photographs from. And over time, you start to get a feel for what will work and what won't work. Generally, I tend to look for bodies of water. That's something that I really like to photograph. So that might be the lakes here in the Lake District or tarns, and even in some cases, rivers and streams. And this, in this particular example, what I'm looking at is Oldswater, Lake Oldswater. Now, we know that the sun is rising at about 64 degrees from north. And we can see that that angle puts us perfectly in line with Oldswater. So if I was shooting from Glen Coyne, the sun is going to be rising pretty much uh, straight down the lake from that point. But I've shot many times from Glen Coyne before, and at the moment I'm trying to find something a bit different. And so actually on this occasion, what I'm considering doing is climbing up to the summit of Sheffield Pike. And I'll still be able to shoot in that general direction because Sheffield Pike sits at the end of Oldswater. But if I get up there uh, to the summit for sunrise, I shall be looking along the lake just as the sun is starting to rise. And I think that could be perfect for an image. Now, I don't always like to shoot towards the rising sun. For some shots, I like to have the sun off to one side. And for other shots, for other compositions, I even like to have overcast conditions, so I'm not all that worried about the direction of the sun. So having identified a potential location for a shot, I then start to do a little bit of research around it. Now, I could use Flickr or Instagram, but the problem is that those platforms are generally used by photographers and what I don't want to do is be too heavily influenced by other photographers. What I want to be able to do is to go to a location with fresh eyes and make my own decision about a composition. 
And so what I'm looking for here is potential and not necessarily the finished image. And that's why I use Google Image Search. It pulls images from various different locations. And so in this example, we have the view of Oldswater from Sheffield Pike. And you can see at Sheffield Pike there's this interesting can and this bit of um, this bit of rock that's sticking out that's got some interesting engravings on it. And so I think that might make for an interesting foreground. We can obviously we can see we can position that on the left hand side of the image and then have the view off to Oldswater on the right hand side. Now obviously this isn't uh, a landscape photograph. I think this has been taken by somebody who is a keen walker and they've just taken this quick snapshot of on top of Sheffield Pike. And although it's not the completed image, it does show me that there's an awful lot of potential here. We're really now starting to get somewhere. I mean, we've got a really good potential shot here. We've got uh, an interesting composition with some foreground and looking off in the direction of the rising sun. So this has huge potential. So the next thing that we need to do is turn to a little bit of some of the boring stuff, but you know, nevertheless, very, very important. That's some of the logistics about this shoe. First thing I need to consider is where I'm actually gonna park the car. Now, the OS map is really useful for this, and, and in this case, we can see that there is a car park at Glencoyne, which, of course, I know all about. But in some cases, there isn't going to be a convenient car park, and you're gonna to have to park on the side of the road. And this is where Google Street View can come in really handy. The first thing you do is if you switch to satellite view, you can sometimes see areas on the road where a few cars are parked up. If you then drop into Street View, you can actually make an assessment about whether or not that's going to be a good place for you to park or not. So now that I know where I'm going to park and ultimately where I'm going to shoot from, I can start to plan my route. And the first thing I need to do is to plan how I'm going to get from home to where I'm going to park. And so obviously the best thing to do here is just do a route planner using Google. And the most important thing about this, not only will it tell you your route, but it will also tell you pretty accurately how long it will take you to get there. And this is going to help us to work out when we need to leave home in order to get to location in time for sunrise. Of course, getting from home to where you're going to park is just half the battle. You also need to be able to get from where you're going to park to where you're going to be shooting from. And this again is where the OS map comes in handy. Now I have a subscription to OS Maps online and this allows me to create custom routes. So I can plot the route that I'm going to take from where I'm parking the car to where I actually want to shoot from. And th this gives me two really important pieces of information. The first one is how far I'm going to have to walk, and the second one is how high I'm going to have to climb. And once I have those two pieces of information, I can then calculate how long it's going to take me to get from the car to where I'm shooting from. Now, it used to be the case that the OS map would tell you how long it would take to walk from point A to point B. But for some reason, and I don't know if it's a bug or if I'm not using it right, but that doesn't happen anymore. So what I need to do is I need to take the distance I've got to walk in miles and the height gain, the, the amount I need to climb in meters. And if I go to a site called thewalkingenglishman.com, there's a walking time calculator on there. And if I enter those two numbers, it'll tell me how long it's going to take me to get from where I'm parking the car to the top of Sheffield Pike. So I've got to walk about 2.2 miles, and that's a height gain of 550 meters. And that's telling me that that's going to take me just under two hours to get from the car to the top of Sheffield Pike. Now that I know where I'm shooting from, the next thing I try to figure out is what time I need to be there. So I like to get there as early as I possibly can for sunrise. And that really means the start of blue hour. But blue hour is a bit of a strange term. It's, it's a bit of a photographer's term. And meteorologically speaking, it doesn't really have an equivalent. So the closest thing that we can get to blue hour is actually the start of twilight. Now, in order to figure out when sunrise and twilight is for any particular location in the world, I use something. Uh, I use a website called uh, timeanddate.com, and that will tell me when twilight is. And for Sheffield Pike or Glen Ridding, which is the closest uh, village to where I'm going to be shooting from, uh, twilight actually starts at five o'clock in the morning. Now, if I need to be on location for five o'clock in the morning, and I know it's now going to take me something like two and a half hours to get from my front door to the summit of Sheffield Pike, that tells me that I need to be leaving here 
at half past two in the morning. Now that sounds terribly early, but my alternative is to actually head there the night before and while camp. And unfortunately, I absolutely hate wild camping. I've done it once before, and I am in no hurry ever to try it again. And so for me, that just means that I'm going to have to get up early, drive to Glen Coyne, climb up to Sheffield Pike in the dark, and try and get there for five o'clock in the morning and the start of twilight. So that's pretty much all of the information that I need when I'm planning my shoot. And that's taken me quite a long time to pull that all together. So what I want to do is I want to save that somewhere where I can access it at a later date. And something that I've started to do quite recently is save that in Google Maps. Now Google Maps allows you to create your own maps. So I'll create a map for each location. And on that map I record things like where I'm gonna park, where I'm going to shoot from, and the route that's gonna get me from the car park to my uh, shooting location. I also include other information like how long it's going to take me to get to the car park, how long it's going to take me to climb, how far I've got to walk, how high I have to climb, and um, also the uh, image, the reference image that I've got there that's going to remind me the sort of composition that I'm going to go for. And I save all that off, and over time, I'm going to build up a series of location maps. And that means that if I want to go and shoot anywhere in particular, that information is always to hand. Unfortunately for me, the planning doesn't end there. Now, if I was into wild camping, what I could do is I could walk up there in the afternoon with my tent, find somewhere to pitch my tent, and then spend the evening looking for a composition for the morning so that I know exactly what I'm doing when sunrise arrives. And then I can have a horrible night's sleep and then get up for twilight, set my camera up, and away I go. But because I don't want to do that, I do have to go and scout out the location. And so I will take some time to hike up there in the daytime because I don't want to be hiking up there for the first time in the dark. So I do want to learn the route a little bit. And then when I get up there, I will just check out the, the uh, compositions and also see if I can find any alternative compositions that might work better. And so for me, scouting locations is really, really important. One of the things that scouting a location does is actually cement in my mind whether that is a location that I definitely want to visit. And in this example, Sheffield Pike, this is actually going to take quite a lot of effort to get to that location for the sort of conditions that I want. And so we need to make sure that we give ourselves the best opportunity to get those kind of locations. And so this is when we need to check the weather forecast. Now, traditionally, I used to use the BBC weather app, but I found that that was very, very, very unreliable. And so I've started to use a website called Clear Outside. And that gives me two kind of key pieces of information. The first one is the type of cloud that we get. So for a sunrise shot like this, what we want is some high-level cloud, but we don't want any cloud at medium and low levels because that will block the light as it's coming up uh, at sunrise. If we have high level cloud, then that gives us the best opportunity that some of that light will be reflected and we'll get some kind of interesting sky. The other thing that I pay a very close attention to is the wind speed. So I don't like to shoot in high winds, particularly when I'm shooting at the edge of a lake because of course what I'm looking for is perfect reflections. But in the case of Sheffield Pike, it's quite high. I don't want strong winds because that just makes my photography a lot harder. And it makes video and video myself a lot harder. And let's not forget that I do try to film all of my landscape photography excursions. So those are the two things I'm looking for. Nice high cloud, no low to medium cloud, and if at all possible, no wind. Now, in order to get the right conditions, I do need to keep checking that weather forecast, and sometimes it may take me a few days, maybe even a few weeks, to get the sort of conditions that I'm looking for. But once I've found those conditions, once I have a potential for a shoot, then I need to make sure that I'm ready. So the night before I do a few things, I make sure I get all my gear ready the night before so that I'm not having to rush around in the morning and get all my kits all down. So that means getting everything together, cleaning all my gear, charging all my batteries and etc. I also like to tell somebody where I'm going just to be on the safe side. So I always tell Mrs. Sale where I'm headed and roughly what sort of time I expect to be home. And then I get a good night's sleep because I've got to be up at super early o'clock in the morning. 
And the final bit about planning is probably another bit that I'm not very good at, and that is to be flexible. Now, planning will only get you so far. You also need a little bit of luck, and more often than not, for us landscape photographers, the luck will go against us. And so we need to be flexible. We need to be able to deviate from our plan and to try and take photographs that better suit the conditions. Now, I'm really very bad at this. I will tend to follow through a plan right to the end, regardless of what the conditions are like. And in many cases, I'll come back with an image that has a nice strong subject and is nicely composed, but doesn't have the right sort of light. And my photography could definitely improve if when I go and try to execute a plan and find that conditions aren't quite right, that I deviate from that plan and try and make the most of the time that I've spent getting up to the top of a mountain like Sheffield Pike. So there you go, those are the details of everything that I do when I'm planning a landscape photography shoot. From finding a location, to finding the right conditions, to planning my route and how I'm gonna get there. Now I have talked about a lot of websites that I use in this process, and I will leave links to all of them in the description below.